years of uh, you know blending a false bubble and uh, you know the uh, the 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 federal reserve is uh, ambitiously lending to uh support purchases of so-called securities which is of course uh, just gambling on securities and uh, you know when the prices were over inflated and uh, and uh, the the false bubble could no longer be sustained they announced they weren't going to support this any longer and uh, you know so the stock market could only crash and uh, so we uh, we we descend into 10 years of monetary collapse because uh when the failure transpires uh you know it's a matter of having exceeded our creditworthiness so we can't afford uh to sustain a vital circulation any longer uh so uh, be, being as we have, uh, have assumed so much debt in the terminal stages of of the lifespan uh the payments are almost all uh in a very short time uh um you know d deflate the circulation so deflation is the ultimate consequence of this failure uh under this obfuscation of the currency and uh, being as uh, the state of destroyed creditworthiness is persistent effectively the failure is is permanent the only thing uh that uh, that allows us to uh return to former industry is uh forgiving the uh destroyed inherently destroyed credit creditworthiness to begin the system over so there isn't actually a uh you know uh, a a rescue of the economy at all um what what happens is you have to uh, abandon um, the fact that uh, uh, creditworthiness has been destroyed across the entire system by multiplication of artificial indebtedness in proportion to capacity to service debt, which is the cause of failure. So this persists for 10 years. Uh, then we have World War II. And uh, the reason that I feel compelled to mention World War II mostly is a very unfortunate misunderstanding um, which is uh, largely promoted by the people that own the media and uh, we can all readily deduce who that's going to be uh, but this idea is readily and persistently promoted by the media that World War II is uh, why we uh, you know, emerged from the uh, Great Depression into prosperity. This is not true at all. Uh, the war itself had nothing, whatever, to do uh, with it. Wars are destructive. They're costly to resources and development, and they dedicate us um, to producing things which uh, are, are not matters of prosperity at all. Um, why we emerged at this time doesn't have to do with the coincident event of World War II. It has to do with the forgiving of, of, of destroyed creditworthiness. So actually, it's a decision to allow people to borrow further so they can buy cars to get to, uh, you know, uh, industrial sites that are uh, uh, producing you know war materials and so on and so forth and then we develop all this industry and all this equipment which we can use for you know private industry uh, you know afterward but it's this forgiving of of the the former destruction you know state of destruction which this lie of economy imposes upon us it's the forgiving of that uh, that allows a second lifespan to begin after it's dispossessed us from everything we begin anew so we begin the second lifespan of the Federal Reserve System. The first one uh, resulted in utter uh, failure but 15 years into its existence. After having promised uh, to uh, prevent all the disastrous consequences, which in fact it can only precipitate.
and uh, understanding this uh, uh, thesis of inevitable failure then we understand that hmm, indeed there's no way and this is why uh, that, that there's no way that these uh, lies that it would protect us from these things uh, could have ever have prevailed and what do we find then when we examine the history there's no account no one offered any uh, reasonable proposition of just how subjecting uh, 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 the people's prosperity to this obfuscation of the currency could ever have served them. There is no proof of that ever, as I've said already. Uh, uh, modern economics is nothing but a lie to preserve and, and perpetrate a system of exploitation. So uh, it's entirely bereft of, of formal proof and theorem because, in fact, in no way whatsoever does it serve us. And not only that, but uh, the uh, most undesirable um, fact about uh, the intentional uh, exploitation for which this lie of economy exists is that the last thing that it desires is for us to understand it. So all history, all education is uh, stripped entirely of, uh, of, a, uh, um, of an explanation of how this obfuscation of the currency can only multiply artificial indebtedness into terminal failure. It's just a matter of time. In fact, as I said, I, I provided the Reagan administration with computer models, and maybe I'll, I'll talk about them in a, in a moment. Because So what happens on the heels of World War II is we start anew. Uh, Property is very inexpensive. Uh, you know, houses uh, didn't cost much. Uh, you know, and we all start going back to work because um, the parasite decides that uh, it thrives more from a host which is uh, prospering more, which is producing more. So uh, basically, it's a new age where uh, exploitation may be restrained more than it was in the first lifespan, which resulted in practically immediate failure. Fifteen years is a very short time to destroy uh, a, a, the lie of economy by uh, artificial multiplication of uh, multiplication of artificial indebtedness. So, uh, you know, uh, the first people uh, to live under the beginning of the lifespan have an advantage over the rest, especially when you promote further kinds of exploitation, which leads into artificial escalation of housing prices. Houses, like all other things, actually depreciate as we, as we consume with them. But if we pay more and more and more from them, for them, if we pay as much as we can afford for for them, particularly, uh, this is to the advantage of this system of exploitation, which then uh, is given free license uh, by the idea, the false idea that we benefit by paying more for things. We, we, you know, we we exult in the fact that you know our housing values are going up, and there's no such fact at all. That value of the house is going down. And you're simply paying more for it than ever before. And the more that you're paying for it is is escalating faster than your salaries are. So it's to your disadvantage. And you're hoping that in the end you're going to make out better. But, you know, in the end, you know, the music stops. And it's just not that the, there's one, there's not enough chairs for one person. It's there's not enough chairs for any of us, you know, in the end. Because... Uh, Artificial indebtedness is 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 multiplied beyond the means of the of the whole system. So I saw this when I was young, and uh, you know, and uh, came up with this idea of mathematically perfected economy when I'm a you know um, sixteen, and uh, uh, you know, and and I, I don't mean to you know it sounds derogatory to say that, but uh, you know, you're talking about you know, a 16-year-old who can prove the Pythagorean theorem off the top of his head, you know. So, uh, 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 and I've discussed and promoted and advocated mathematically perfected economy uh, ever since. It's been subjected to, uh, you know, um, the highest uh, intellectual communities, the entire math staff of the University of Colorado, you know, and... Uh, 
all kinds of events that uh, you know have received it uh, not just warmly but you know like uh, like uh, divine revelation and uh anyway uh it was serious for me because uh i saw the the ramifications of 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 this lie of economy and uh i started uh writing uh presidents uh you know or not just writing but calling talking to people and uh you know and uh the i could have written nixon i didn't trust nixon i never had anything to do with him and uh i my early efforts with uh, gerald ford could be said to be you know a wee bit amateurish uh you know um probably actually they were really quite sophisticated considering everything and um yet uh things got really serious uh through the carter administration because i could see the extremely high uh interest rates uh that uh, the federal reserve was imposing upon us uh were very very damaging and uh come the 1979 uh presidential campaign i'm uh, in intense contact with a number of campaigns but uh in particular uh with the reagan campaign and i was likewise uh, you know uh had an iron in the fire with the carter administration and uh, in fact uh, you know i as i said in a, the earlier program or explained uh, you know i provided all these proofs to the reagan administration that he was going to fail um in fact when uh, reagan turned to carter in the 79 uh, debates between the eventual uh, republican and democrat nominees uh uh when carter turned uh, famously or reagan turned famously to carter and you know stared him dead in the eye he gave him the evil eye and he pronounced the uh 150 billion dollars of federal debt that carter had accumulated over 4 years as quote unforgivable unquote and that's practically how he said it and uh that moment in fact turned uh the presidential election uh but reagan had already been provided mathematic proofs that his 10 percent per year reductions in federal tax rates for three years would not balance the federal budget nor would they uh solve price or even offset price price inflation uh, and that he would probably accumulate, in fact, far greater federal debt than any president before him. So as he spoke to Carter in that way, he had already been informed uh, that uh, he was as phony as he was uh, uh, making Carter out to be. Um, about two years into the first uh, uh, Reagan term, um, I suddenly, I, I thought I was never going to hear from them again. And, and suddenly, uh, they called me and, uh, and, uh, the person who called me confided in me that, uh, it was looking like, uh, all the, uh, you know, all the, all these, these propositions, uh, that I'd, uh, provided them were proving true in a worse way than they ever dreamed. And, uh, we ended up having a number of discussions, uh, very serious ones, uh, um, uh, you know, where I was trying to assert that, uh, you know, they had to adopt mathematically perfected economy. And where I'm going, uh, with this for anyone who thinks, uh, maybe that, uh, it's time to fall asleep, uh, is that, uh, in 1979, I actually provided uh, the Reagan administration <clears throat> with a mathematic proof of one and one only way to convert, uh, this lie, uh, this terminal, uh, lie of economy into just mathematically perfected economy in a single day and virtually without cost. Now, that idea is something which, um, should raise your interest unless you are asleep. Uh, because uh, what it means is that it's possible to do this today. Now, um, what I'm arguing as I explain this history is that we can't depend on politicians to do it, and uh, there has to be a better way.
and there is this way and this is what I've engineered so we're leading up to a discussion for how we are to do this how are we to save you know so many homes uh, from uh, being further processed and foreclosure across the entire country and every town and city uh, you know how are we going to